folks for more on this. Please welcome to our program our first guest tonight, Republican Whip Congressman Steve Scalise of Louisiana. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Great to be with you and uh, look forward to this show uh, really exposing a lot of that fraudulency that you're you're talking about, and it needs to be exposed because the mainstream media won't get this out, but the truth needs to get out. Well, look, Congressman, it's no coincidence that you're our very first guest on this primetime program. I know you're committed to uh, to doing just that. And I want America to know that this idea of socialism is not some fantasy. You've got once mainstream politicians, you've got a president for the United States, a candidate for the presidency of the United States of America who are pushing policies aimed at pushing us down this path. Yeah, we've never seen a more radical uh, approach in terms of the agenda of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. But look, she's the fourth most liberal person in the entire United States Senate. And that's with a socialist, Bernie Sanders, is part of that mix. It's hard to be the fourth most liberal in, in such a polarized Senate, but it tells you where they are. They're not moderates at all. Joe Biden, look, this guy's been in politics for over 50 years. Show me an issue he hasn't been on every side of. Uh, and so what you've seen lately is he's embraced the entire Bernie Sanders agenda. It's a socialist agenda. It's even further to the left than Barack Obama's agenda when he ran for president. And so, you know, just take energy, for example. We've been a dominant force in energy. It's helped America's economy. We, we cre recreated the hottest economy in the world with President Trump leading the way and cutting taxes and getting regulations under control. We're going to get through COVID. Uh, we're very close to a vaccine because of, again, a President Trump's leadership. But ultimately, when we get through this, who do you trust better to rebuild the economy? Uh, Joe Biden, who wants to end fracking in Pennsylvania. Good luck, by the way, selling that in Pennsylvania and Ohio uh, when they're, they're seeing such great energy production in the fracking industry. You know, when you talk about tax policy, Joe Biden and Kamala said that they want to raise taxes. They want to reverse the Trump tax cut. So every single segment of our economy was benefiting from that. That all goes away. Defunding police? Look, you want to talk about an issue that's starting to resonate with people. When you see these cities literally being ransacked uh, by rioters and mobs and criminals that literally take over parts of Seattle or Minneapolis, now you got de Blasio in New York, takes a billion dollars away from police, and people are fleeing New York in droves because they don't want to live in a city that doesn't respect or uh, has law enforcement so there to have your back. Congress, when you look at all these policies, and then you look at the Democratic tactics, and they have a history, really, of coming up with tactics based off of lies and propaganda. We now have this whole issue about the post office. Um, to me, it's absolutely laughable. You know, if every American voted by mail in this election, it would amount to a 1.5% increase in the amount of mail the post office sees. I believe this is a tactic concocted by Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer to lay any election craziness that might unfold at the feet of President Trump and somehow just paint it out that he's trying to block things when in reality this is a made up crisis. Oh, it absolutely is fabricated. Um, you know, the old adage that, that Rahm Emanuel said, don't let a crisis go to waste, is the Democrat playbook. And they're doing that with the post office. Keep in mind, before COVID, and we're talking about over a year ago, one of Nancy Pelosi's top initiatives uh, was changing our voting laws in America to go to a California style of voting, where you, and, and right now what they're trying to do is force mailed ballots to everybody on the rolls, including people illegally on the rolls. Every single state has people on the rolls illegally. Every state has it. You know, people move. Some people actually, believe it or not, register illegally. That's why it's important when you show up to vote, you have to show your picture ID in most states. She nullifies all of that. That's what this fight's about. Uh, and look, I mean, if, you wanna, if you're sitting at home, you don't want to go to the polls, you can request a mail-in ballot. That's always been allowed in every state. And, and that will still go on. And the post office, by the way, is better equipped to handle that now. They actually have more money and cash reserves uh, right now. They have cash in the bank to get them through the entire year if we don't give them another dollar. So this idea that they need well, $75 billion, it's a, it's a joke, it's a ruse, uh, and it's one more tactic for them to have mandatory ballots to people registered illegally. And remember, this is the party that wants to give free health care to people that are here illegally. Both Joe Biden and Kamala Harris raised their hand on that question. You know, Congressman, you, you, you talk about the amount of money they want to send to the post office. It is laughable to me. If they believe the post office has all these problems, the solution for Democrats has always been 
flood money at the problem. Yet apparently when it comes to policing, they have just the opposite idea. It's not flood money at policing. It's, it's take away take money away. from policing. So it's whatever's good for them at the moment. It shows you their priorities. You know, look, you, you, you look at what they've been focused on. It's not families and it businesses. And, you know, we worked hard. President Trump worked hard to get the Paycheck Protection Program. It saved millions of small businesses, which also saved tens of millions of jobs. We ought to be focused on helping reconnect workers uh, with their jobs, helping reopen schools safely. If a school needs hand sanitizer or a mask, there's money out there for that right now. They're not concerned about that. They're trying to play games with schools, keeping schools closed, which, by the way, hurts millions of kids. 50 million kids are counting on us to get this right, and it can be done in, my, in my New Orleans, right in my backyard. I dropped my son off at school this morning. They're already back at school in the classroom. It's not that complicated to do. Some are doing it. Some choose not to for political reasons. It's hurting the kids if you don't do it. That's not Nancy Pelosi's focus. It's on trying to make a, right. some kind of political statement out of the post office. So they, they love to try to make these statements this way. And of course, they love Dr. Fauci. And you raise the issue of schools. We talk about voting in person. Well, their beloved Dr. Fauci, who I've got some serious issues with, and he, he doesn't seem to have been right many times, but I think he's right on this one. Listen to this soundbite, and then I'll let you respond. You see, when you go into a store, whatever that store is, you know, a CVS uh, the uh, drugstore or, or a Starbucks or what have you, they have people staying six feet apart with masks. I think if you stay six feet apart with masks, you can do whatever it is that you need to do, whether you're going to CVS, whether you're going to Starbucks, or whether you're voting. I, I don't see any reason not to do that. Oh, he, he, he took away from the, from the Pelosi line there. That's Dr. Fauci, Steve Scalise. Yeah, he just did a body slam to Pelosi's fake argument. I mean, you know, you, you look at you, you look at going, uh, you know, right now, if you go to your local grocery store, you're around people much more than if you're in a classroom, for example, where the teacher is at, at best maybe 10 feet away from the first student who has a mask on. So the idea of being six feet away with a mask is the safe protocol in a classroom setting. You're even further away from those children. So that's not the issue. It's whether or not you want to reopen schools and help those kids. And by the way, the parents who don't want to be homeschoolers anymore, who want to go back to their job, want to go back to work. Look, we, we had an election in New Orleans this weekend, and I went and voted Saturday in person. I wore a mask, went in. It was a safe experience. It was real easy. We got in and got out. Uh, no issues there. So, you know, this and idea you know, that Congressman, that's exactly you know, what Nancy Pelosi is afraid of. Is a joke. She knows that it's She's a safe scared experience. To Hey, um, I so appreciate you coming on tonight. Uh, it's a big night for us here at Stinchfield and Newsmax yeah. with our launch into prime time. And I'm so, so grateful, uh, Congressman, you could be a part of it. Well, I'm honored to be your first of many. And uh, good luck to you in this show. And thanks for fighting to get the truth out. We need it, especially now more than ever between now and November. We got to stay focused. We got to win this election.